So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands and put my finger in the mark of the nails and my hand in his side, I will not believe. A week later, the disciples were again in the house, and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Do not doubt, but believe. Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. Welcome to Day One. I'm Bill Turpy. Our radio preacher is the Reverend Catherine Taylor from the Presbyterian Church USA. She is pastor of New Covenant Church in Doraville, Georgia. The title of her message is Hand Witness Testimony from John chapter 10, verses 19 through 31. In a moment, some reflections on this passage and also on her message. But first, here's some brief thoughts from Reverend Taylor. In times of doubt and in times of certainty, the Lord responds to our need and makes use of our faith. That's what we're going to explore together in the sermon today. Maybe you're the kind of person who is dubious by nature. Maybe for you, faith has always felt like a matter that needs continual sorting through. Your faith is secure and real, but your questions are too. Many faithful people struggle continually with belief because struggle is part of their way of believing. Once long ago, a group of pastors and I went on a spiritual retreat led by a rather remarkable nun. At one point that weekend, we had an assigned period when we could speak with our leader privately. In my meeting, she said an insightful thing for someone who had only known me a little while. Keep struggling, she said as I walked out the door. It's your way of being close to God. So Thomas says, I'm not going to believe unless I can put my hand into the, into the wounds of Jesus. And then I'm going to believe. So when Jesus is there in the next time, he says, okay, Thomas, put your hand in these marks and believe. And Thomas does. But, you know, do we all need this kind of support? I think there's times that I need this kind of support. I need that kind of help. I love this story of Thomas. I so admire. There seem to be people out there that uh, can have rock-solid faith in the midst of everything that they're going through without the signs. I wish I were one of those, but sometimes I need something tangible. I need a sign. I'm like Thomas. I'm often worried if folks don't have something of the struggle. I know as a, as a teacher in a, in a university classroom, when I ask my students, did you get this? Does anyone have any questions? If they just stare back at me and say, no questions, I'm almost convinced they did not get it. I want to hear someone say, well, I didn't quite understand that, because that tells me they're really, really paying attention. We think that doubt is a bad thing, but throughout the Old Testament, we have people struggling and wrestling with God. We have people doing the wrong thing and yet coming back to God all the time. And um, that's what I like about the wisdom literature of the Bible, the Ecclesiastes and the Psalms. You get what it's really like to be human in those books, and it's okay to be human and to be a faithful person also. I think the signs appeal to that visceral place where we need to feel held and trust. And what strikes me is how often we get signs and they're not enough. <laughs> um, there's a wonderful, in the uh, Passover Seder, there's a wonderful prayer or, or phrase, song, Dianu, if you had sent us Moses, Dianu, it would have been enough. If you'd parted the Red Sea, Dianu, it would have been enough. And they recite this litany of signs and, and that God has given the people, and yet it's still hard to trust. So the signs, yes, they're important, and they're easy to dismiss when we're not open to them. So what is the significance here of belief, faith, doubt? I mean, what, what are these pointing us toward? When we struggle in our faith, that that indicates that we have a growing faith because growth 
requires some struggle. Mm -hmm. So I think a struggling faith is a good thing. The idea that you have to wrestle with mm -hmm. this, mm -hmm. that you can't just accept it on face value or that there are things that bother you and you need to work those through. Right. That's a good thing. Maybe That's it's saying something thing. about the importance of what we are trusting. Uh, this is worth our struggle. This is worth wrestling with. This is worth asking questions about. And so I'm going to want to wrestle and struggle and, yes, at times doubt if that means I can go deeper in the faith. In many ways, it's like a runner who hits that wall and says, I can't go further. It's only then that they're really going to find out what it means to truly run as they go past that portal and say, all right, now, through the struggle, I'm going to go deep. I know I have hit dark nights of the soul when it's been very hard to believe or trust. And, and before that, I thought, hey, I'm doing fine. I, I see this stuff. It makes sense. I intellectually understand it. I can assent to that. I can trust in it. But then the dark night of that soul comes and you say, I'm not sure. What's going on? I don't know which theologian said this, but talks about their uh, paradigm of faith in the Old Testament is David, who is not usually the most likely person you would think of as a paradigm of faith. I mean, Abraham, yeah, Jacob, maybe. David sort of screws up a lot. Um, <laughs> but yet in the midst of his problems, in the midst of humanity, his humanity, David never fails to call out to God when he is at those dark nights, when he's at those bottoms. And so I don't think it's about not having doubt. It's about calling out to God in the midst of that doubt. <laughs>